September is Emergency Preparedness Month. This video is part of the 30 Days of Preparedness series, which is a collab between the following YouTube channels. Sutton's Days, Rogue Preparedness, Mouse Toes, Provident Preppers, Mama Bear Preparedness, The Urban Prepper, City Prepper, Ethical Preparedness, Iridium 242, The Happy Prepper, Freedom Homestead, and of course, me, Prepper Potpourri. Be sure to watch all the videos in the series. So I know you've been busy stocking up various supplies, you know, food and water, but you need to take some time and store that food correctly because we want to extend the life as far as we can of our food supplies. You know, it's really great to have a short-term pantry, but it's even better to have a long-term pantry. So the first thing you gotta decide is where you're storing your food, and often it's in more than one place. Now, take for instance, freeze-dried food. You know, in some cases it can last 30 years or more. Wow, right? But it's very dependent on temperature. It must be 75 degrees or less, and it prefers a consistent temperature. So, if you've had it in your hallway closet for a while, it might have got over that 75 degrees, and every temperature higher than that is going to take away years of your storage. So, think about that when you're storing your long-term freeze-dried food. And a lot of you are out there and you are canning, and that is fantastic. It prefers a consistent temperature between 50 and 70 degrees. And darkness. It doesn't want a lot of light because light can go through the jar and it can deteriorate the food quality. So do you have a cool, dark place to store your home canned food? And what about if you're dehydrating? Where are you storing that food? You know, you have to be careful. It can't be in a high humidity area or you can have a problem. And again, cool is better. Now, no matter where you're storing your food, make sure it's in rodent-proof containers. You know your canning jars are great. Mice or rats cannot gnaw through that. But you have to be careful for anything in plastic, plastic bags, and even miler bags. So, make sure your storage area is rodent proof. And of course, you've been hearing this all along, right? Rotate your food, especially your home canned goods or your store bought canned goods. Rotate it through before that expiration date. Is make sure you always label whatever you're bringing home from the store. You know, look at the expiration date and use your marker. And like if it said September, 2023 put a 9 slash 23 big on it so you know when you should use it by even though in many cases it's still going to be good after that date depending on what temperature you're keeping it right but always a good idea to label and in some cases there are expiration dates missing then put your purchase date I always put a P then and the date that I bought it but label it so you know so you can rotate your storage. Now the fourth thing is, there are some hacks to allow you to store your food longer. And one of the best hacks is to have a freezer or more than one freezer. I have the side-by-side uh, -side, you know, freezer that came with my refrigerator, but I also have a very large upright freezer and a chest freezer. And yes, they're pretty full. And right now I have to work on using the stuff in my chest freezer because we're going to be getting a half a pig about middle of November. So I've got to make room for it. But freezers are great for extending your food pantry life. Now, I know because of COVID, freezers were very hard to find. But I understand they're back in the stores again. So if you can afford it, and you need one, 
you should be able to buy a freezer now. And believe me, it will come in handy for your food storage. Now, you know, we all put meats, vegetables, fruit in our freezers. According to USDA, and this is at zero Fahrenheit degrees or below, it says no, freezer storage times are for quality only. Frozen foods remain safe indefinitely. Did you get that? Indefinitely. You know, most of us think, oh, we're supposed to use up everything in our freezer in a year. Hmm, not really true. I myself have used bacon over four years old that I found in the back of my freezer. And you know what? It tasted great. Couldn't tell any difference in it. I didn't tell my family members till afterwards. No one got sick and it tasted good. So I said, hey, did you know how old that bacon was? And they kind of looked at me like, mom. But anyway, so, you know, the problem with if you aren't storing things correctly in your freezer, it can have freezer burn and maybe nutrients are being lost. Now, when I buy meat, for instance, I take it out of that packaging, the original packaging, and I vacuum pack it in a plastic bag. And of course, date it and put it in the freezer because then it'll stay a lot longer without the freezer burn. But there's many things that you can store in your freezer. Let me show you my side-by-side -side here. Can you see all that? Yep, that's butter. I buy butter when it's on sale and I freeze it. And they say it'll keep six months. It will keep a year. If it is salted butter, it can keep a year just fine. Unsalted butter does not have as long a shelf life in the freezer. But a year for butter in the freezer, that's not bad. Oh, you notice this jar? Yep, that's full of unpeeled garlic cloves. Because one of the ways I save my garlic is uh, I do peel out the cloves, I slice them up, I dehydrate it, and then I grind it and make garlic powder. But I also had a lot of cloves left over afterwards, and so I just put them in this jar with a lid and freeze it. And then when I need a garlic clove, I just take it out of the jar. And it's great, and it's easier to take off that husk, you know, the paper around it. It comes off easier when it is frozen. Now, of course, you could peel them ahead of time and put them in the freezer, but again, garlic will keep that way for 12 months. That's one year in your freezer. Okay, so let's go over to my other upright freezer. Well, as you can see, there's quite a few things on the door here. Pancake mix, yep, I keep it in the freezer. It stays a lot longer. Flour. Again, flour will stay, in my opinion, just about indefinitely in the freezer. Now, depending on how often you bake, that might not be a solution for you. But to be honest, I don't bake a lot. Uh, so for me, storing my flour in the freezer works really well. And it keeps it fresh. Just when I'm going to use it, I let it get to room temperature and then put it in the recipe. But storing flour in my freezer works well. And I also store baking powder and yeast and other things in my freezer. Let's go up to the top here. Yep, that's bread. I store regular white bread that I might make or get from the store. And also more of what I call the cake breads, you know, like zucchini or my lemon blueberry bread, which is so good. Um, and what I do in that case is I double foil wrap and I put it in the freezer. And again, I have taken out a zucchini bread loaf that was three years old and brought to room temperature, sliced it, and it tasted just fine. It wasn't even dry. So that's the way you can make up a lot of loaves of bread when you have a bounty like zucchini, and then you can have it all year long. Now, nuts can go rancid, and so you wanna be careful. If you keep it in your freezer, again, they can last for 12 months. So if you have the room and your family likes nuts, it's a good idea to keep them in your freezer. Now, in my downstairs chest freezer, which I don't wanna take you all the way downstairs, move the equipment, but I do keep lard there for baking. And lard will keep 
just fine in your freezer for two years and believe me I think even past that date and the nice thing about lard is it doesn't freeze solid you can just scoop out what you need for your recipe and it's fine now I need to buy some more milk um, I'm I don't like milk <laughs> and my husband's not big on milk so I keep milk mainly if right the grandchildren come or um, I need it in a recipe but you know what happens yeah all of a sudden it goes chunky and smells funny and it's off so what I usually do is freeze some of my milk and I put it in another plastic container leave enough space at the top because remember liquids expand in the freezer and then I can have what I need I just take it out um, let it thaw out in the refrigerator generally and you know but what happens is the fat kind of separates because I do use whole milk so when that happens I just use my immersion blender and shh, yep and pretty soon I have milk and I think it tastes about the same but remember <laughs> I don't really like the taste of milk but it's great in recipes and everything and that way I don't ever have to worry about saying to my husband oh dear can you run to the store we're all out of milk now many of you know I have my own chickens and they are laying about five eggs a day which means in less than three days I have a dozen eggs and right now there's only two of us living here and guess what I have maybe eggs maybe maybe two of them a month now my husband really likes the eggs and when the grandkids come over they love scrambled eggs with little bacon bits in it but I have a lot of eggs now I give them to co-workers and other people but pretty soon my chickens uh, will be well they've already started molting and then it gets to the point where we don't have much winter sunshine the days get short and they have molted and they stop laying eggs for a period of two months or longer so that what is that well that's usually during the holiday season when you do all your baking and you know what that's what I use eggs the most in is recipes so I freeze my eggs let me show you each of these are worth two whole eggs and you just let them thaw out I can make an omelet I can make scrambled eggs and I can use them in a recipe so it's a great way to save eggs and these eggs will last in the freezer for a year Now I don't need to store eggs for a year but you might so it is a great solution now people have asked me what's the best way to save potatoes and onions I think dehydrating is the best way you put them in a jar with an oxygen absorber or use a vacuum sealer and they will stay ready to use for five years or longer and they'll taste just great as long as that package remains sealed and they don't get any humidity in them now of course you could freeze your onions too but you know that just takes up more room and I think the dehydrated onions work just great I actually have onions dehydrated in the circles you know for like on a sandwich I have them diced up and both of them work well and the diced ones I can actually grind up and make onion powder if I need them brown sugar I keep a little differently I learned this on another channel it might have been our half acre homestead our cat's cradle I'm not sure but I saw it and I've used it ever since let me show you what I do see I usually cut off a little corner of a full bag in this case this is only a half a bag and then I put it in another vacuum sealer bag I vacuum seal it and that really does it without having the sugar spill out of the bag but as you can see it gets very firm but the brown sugar stays soft it does not turn hard this way and I've kept brown sugar for two plus years and had no problems as long as I store it this way so it's something for you to think about now I've also done that with beans and with rice I think it prolongs keeping the nutrients in the beans and rice also some things are just better stored in a mylar bag or a bucket 
Take salt, for instance. Salt is very important. They estimate that you need about five pounds per person per year. Now, I store a variety of salt, anything from kosher salt, iodized salt, sea salt. And I put them in the original packaging in a bucket. And then I add a bag of rice that I punch your little holes in that my hope is that will absorb any humidity that gets into the bucket. And then I actually screw on the gamma lid. Now, I don't use any oxygen absorbers because then my salt would be like a brick. You can't use oxygen absorbers for salt. The same thing is true for sugar. If you use an oxygen absorber or vacuum seal, again, you would just have a solid piece of sugar, and that's not what we want. Now, I have had success and not success in storing sugar long term. Um, my house does get some humidity here in Michigan, and that has caused some problems no matter what I do. But I have stored it successfully for at least a year and been able to use it. Longer than a year, it does start to clump up. If anybody's got some ideas, I would love to hear it. But storing in a Mylar bag and in a bucket is great for your beans, right? Rice, oats, you know, other grains, and pasta. That's right. Pasta is a good idea. I have buckets of penne pasta and various other pastas because that's great. Just get some tomato sauce, you know, get your spices in there and you have a great dinner and a quick one. So think of storing pasta in your plastic buckets also. Now, many of the things I mentioned involve storing in a freezer. So if you're going to do that, make sure you have a way for that freezer to keep on operating even if you lose power. Either alternative energy or, a, you know, like a generator. You need something because you would hate to have everything spoil in your freezer. But anyway, these are just some ideas for you to think about how can I extend the food shelf life. You know, I'm spending a lot of money on food, right? trying to get ready for whatever happens, and I don't want to see it spoil on the shelves before I need to use it. So these are just some of my thoughts. If you have some thoughts down below, please comment. I'd love to hear them. And I hope you are enjoying this collab between the different prepping channels. And if you're interested, in the corner there, wherever, I have a playlist for all the videos to date in the collab collab the collaboration oh boy you can tell it's the end of the day right anyway have a great week thanks